everyone, welcome back. It is Maggiebot's top 100 games of all time. This is numbers 60 through 51. As I said last time, it's actually becoming really fun. Uh, the farther away I got from actually making the slides for this, uh, the more I've forgotten which order everything's in. And it's becoming really fun to reminisce about all my favorite games all in a row. So even if no one's watching, then I would probably still do this because it's been really, really neat. Um, if you are enjoying, please share this around. And there's going to be a whole playlist full of these so you can watch 100 through number one in just a short couple of weeks. Uh, let's get started. Number 60. Uh, this is Repello. Okay, um, this is a 2010 release from Mind Twister Games. It's two to four players designed by Arnie Holstrom. Now, uh, what's so fabulous about this game is that um, the cover doesn't really tell you much. So this looks like you're going to have magnets that shoot around this board. But really what you have is some interesting little plastic plungers uh, with stacked discs on them. And every time you lift up one of those plungers, it leaves a disc behind. And so you're going to be moving your little plunger around the, the board and before you can end your turn, no discs can be in adjacent squares. So you're going to be like pushing one away from the other and one away from the other and causing these fabulous little chain reactions. Um, I, I kind of serve it as a little bit of a tradition to teach this to friends and family. Um, I definitely remember having taught this with uh, Stephanie Straw and I, I see it every once in a while in the background of her videos. It makes me really happy. <laughs> uh, so Rapello is Good, abstract, silly fun. It's not meant to be taken too seriously. There are definitely best moves, but it's a little bit more fun just to kind of move a piece into a bunch of other pieces and see what happens. Um, the goal is to eventually knock pieces off the board and collect them, but there's also some stealing mechanisms in the game to steal from other players if you knock their plunger off the board. So really fun, interactive, and Mind Twister is this great company that you don't see a lot of their titles like getting a lot of props or anything. I just, I, I enjoyed Rapello from the day I tried it in the middle of my store. Uh, I think it's very, very interesting. And I hope that if you have a chance to play it or see it in like a clearance bin, you take a look because I would never, ever, ever trade my copy of Rapello. Number 59 is Russian and German Railroads, and I haven't played North American Railroads, but you can lump that one in too. This is a 2013 title, and heck, let's lump first class into this as well, because um, pretty much anything in this line is going to match what I say about Russian Railroads. Um, this is a two to four player game from Helmut Oli and Lonnie Orgler. Um, it was pu published by Hansi and Gluck and Z-Man Games. Now, uh, Helmet and Lonnie, as far as I know, have a more traditional train game background, but this is kind of a train-themed worker placement game. Okay, so without going into any detail, what is so fabulous about Russian Railroads and probably gets the award for most player satisfaction on my list. Um, you start the game, you grab a couple of actions, you're doing a couple of things, and each round you're going to score some points. So maybe I get a couple points here or there, maybe I get 10 my first round. That's a good round. My second round, maybe I get 25. And by the last round of the game, you're getting 125 points and lapping the score track. And it's just so darn fun to kind of watch an engine take flight like this. And I mean, I guess you can take that literally if you want. Um, I think it's so fabulous. Uh, Russian railroads, after a few plays, might have a most dominant strategy um, that you all kind of race toward. But it's definitely easy to beat if someone misplays a little bit, even if they get that strategy going, you can definitely take advantage of their misplays and jump ahead of them in other ways. German Railroads added in two different types of modules, so you could do both of them or one or the other. And then um, First Class was the card game version, which has slightly different me mechanisms, but the same feeling. They did a really good job of matching the player satisfaction feeling um, from the base game. And let's take a moment with First Class as well. Um, so that one has five modules in it, A through E, and each game you choose two of the modules and you shuffle them into the base deck. And that feeling of 
as soon as you know all the modules pretty well, that feeling of having just a little difference but similar game is really nice. It just means that each time you put those modules in, you're going to have to focus a little bit differently on the way that the cards are built. Um, really fabulous, and I, I hope that they put out some more games, or maybe I'll go back into their catalog of games and take a look and see if there's something else that might appeal, because I do really like their designer sense and kind of their fan service to the players. Um, okay, sorry, <laughs> that was a long time on Russian Railroads, but I do think it's really worth your time, and it's very easily found online. The online play is very good, so um, highly recommend at least taking a look. Number 58. This is a new one. So this is Solaria's Mission from 2016. It's a two to four player game from Spielworks designed by, and they're, I love this, they're going by Mike and Odie now. <laughs> I think Mike and Odie are the, the same team that built La Granja, and Odie also made uh, La Granja No Siesta, which is a roll and write game, which is fabulous. Um, Solaria's Mission is... Not a great rule book, sorry boys. Um, it is one of the more confusing ones. Spielworks has just not figured out how how best to translate their gameplay into rule books and get you going as quick as possible. So your learning game of this is gonna be a little not fun. Just a little. It has some cool combinations and, and the way that you move around the board and discover things and um, make combinations in, in your gameplay is really interesting and feels a little bit fresh to me. Uh, wasn't the favorite of a lot of players I know, so it hasn't hit the table as often as I might have liked. And 58 might be pushing it, it might need to drop back down just a smidge, because it's so new that I might just have shiny puppy eyes for it. But I think it's really fun, and I think a, a, a retro space theme was a, a good choice for Spillworks, whose catalog can can run a little bit dry for some players so maybe adding a little bit of the space stuff in maybe that would help them discover some new game company that makes amazing games of which you will see more <laughs> very soon um I, I love solaris mission and so i am happy to teach it anytime you need i even have a facebook post that explains how to build an outpost because it's a little bit confusing Number 57 is Potion Explosion from 2015. It's a two to four player game from Horrible Games and Cool Mini or Not. Has a big old crop of designers, Stefano Castelli, Andrea Crespi, and Lorenzo Silva. Um, I'm not sure what else they have done. I believe they've done other work with Horrible Games though. Um, so Potion Explosion, maybe not the heaviest game on my list, but for a light game, I have found this to be one of the most replayable games I have played in this weight class in a long time. You get this cool little dispenser that has real marbles in it, and what you're doing is removing marbles and making uh, chain reactions. You're basically playing Bejeweled in real life, and then using those to power potions. And I did own this already before the app came out, but the app really solidified how much I could actually play this game and still enjoy it. So. Yes, it's like Bejeweled on a board, but then they made an app, so it's like Bejeweled from before, but now added powers. <laughs> I don't know. But um, the actual physical game uh, is beautiful. It's very functional. It's easy to explain. It's intriguing to watch. The clicking noise of the marbles is very pleasant to me. And uh, my friend uh, Chris Urinko, he owns a company called Daft C Concepts, and he makes these fabulous um like birch wood like the you know the little laser cut wood pieces he makes the marble dispensers so i have one of those and i i just think it adds just a little bit more charm and i love that uh, so potion explosion yay number 56 okay so um oddball aeronauts is a 2014 two-player game from nigel pine uh the art is all done by his brother lloyd uh it is published by their game company maverick muse so this was a Kickstarter game that I think suffered from kind of the first wave of Kickstarter backlash. So when it was on Kickstarter with all this really unique art and kind of very different gameplay, I think it got a decent amount of attention. And I remember this was one of the first times I ever knew about the one tar, Tiffany Ralph, because she did a really interesting preview for it. Um, I got into the Kickstarter at some point, 
And I noticed that the guys were setting up um, kind of Skype mornings. They were on, they were Sunday mornings for me. They were later in the afternoon for most of them because they're in England. But you can play Oddball Aeronauts over Skype really well because it's played in each player's hand. Um, so we would get on onto Skype and we would all like, I'd have my coffee. They'd have their like evening tea or some people had beers or whiskey. And there was like a whole little group of us and we would play the game over and over and over. And the game itself has a little psychology, a little deduction, and it's a, it's a little fighting game. And as I said, it's played all in hand. So you can play it in line or you can play it at like spaces that don't have table space. I just... I really am in love with this game, and it would be much higher on my list if it was something I would play more. And I don't know why I don't, but it it definitely needs to go back into my rotation. So the guys from Oddball Aeronauts have also had a little bit of trouble getting into, like, interest post-Kickstarter. So they got into stores back home, like the, the UK equivalent of Barnes & Noble, but really no stores accepted it and sold it a lot here in the States. It even got into GTS distribution. And then once they sold out, they just, that's, that was the end of that. So I know that they're kicking off, um, kind of an RPG set in this world soon, which is not really my cup of tea, but, um, anyone that wants to learn Oddball Aeronauts, sometime I will try and set up a Skype date and teach, teach it if you have a copy. Um, it's, it's interesting and beautiful. I love it. Number 55. This is another new one. Sorry. <laughs> I know I said I tried to bat the, the new games down a little bit, but some of them were just really fun. Uh, this is Terraforming Mars from 2016. Um, it, actually, last week it was nominated for the Kenner Spiel Award, um, which is kind of the more advanced version of the Spiel des Jahres, which the Spiel des Jahres is supposed to be like any old person could pick up this game and really enjoy it. The Kenner Spiel is for tabletop enthusiasts, which I think this is perfect for that. Uh, it's a one to five player game. It was designed by a guy named Jacob Frixilis? Frixilius? Frixilis? Don't know yet, but it's published by Frix Games and then Stronghold Games brought it to the States. Terraforming Mars plays like a little bit, it uses the kind of card payment methods from things like Race for the Galaxy, but you're building these crazy tableau engines. So you're playing cards into your tableau and they give you advantages and resources and income and you try and terraform Mars. Um, it's really nice player satisfaction payoff, which is something that's kind of important to me. I like to feel like the game let me do what I wanted to do at least a little bit. It's got to give me something. And um, the only downside, and you can't see it because the cover is so beautiful, but some of the card art is maybe not my favorite. They did digital, they did paintings, and they did photography, and it's not cohesive. But what is, what I've been told, which I probably not, would have not noticed, um, because I, I've, I've taught this game a lot, and most of the people I teach this to end up purchasing it, because it is one of those just neat, flash in the pan, you get it kind of games, is that the theme really makes sense. Um, the things that you're doing are really what you would be doing if you were trying to terraform a planet. Uh, number 54 is Orléans from 2015. This is a two to five player game published by DLP originally and Tasty Minstrel brought it over in style. So Orléans got the Tasty Minstrel deluxification um, from a couple years ago. Uh, they added a fifth player into this, but I'm going to say that the fifth player doesn't exist. I'm going to ignore that completely because really the base map, the way that it's built, is not built for five players, and I have not found any fun in that, so two to four players only, friends. But it is a bag-building game similar to Hyperborea, which I talked about in probably my first video here. Um, you build up your bag and you're pulling uh, cubes out of the bag and placing the cubes on the board, and then any action that fills up, you can remove the cubes, put them back in the bag, and take the action. Um, fun, fast, interactive, easy to learn, easy to teach. No, no downsides, just, just good old fashioned Euroy goodness. Number 53 is Signori, another What's Your Game title. This is from 2015. It's two to four players. Uh, this is designed by, oh dear, Andrea Cevazio and Pierluca Zizi. Going with it. I'm just, I'm just gonna start pronouncing things and then hope that angry, bitter designers send me notes on how to pronounce things and I can send out apologies. Um, so What's Your Game? Just, 
it just gets me, man, that company. So this game is a very unique dice draft. Um, the, the dice get rolled every round and you kind of like, you, you have to decide like how to allocate them and it's very limiting. Uh, there is kind of a gender norms thing going on in this, but it's, it's a, it's a historical game. So that's where they come from for it. But, um, yeah, I, I would just say that you have to kind of play this to understand how very unique it is. If I just told you the mechanisms, you wouldn't quite understand why I'm so in love with it. But I will also say that if you're very tired or you're in the middle of a marathon, do not play this game because you will lose like I did really bad. <laughs> the first two times I played this were about six months apart and it, it was total domination. Later, I played it a little closer together and a little more well-rested, and I did okay. Um, I'm really looking out for a copy of this for a good deal. Anyone have got trades up the wazoo, so let me know. Um, my copy of this, I, I had gifted this, and um, so this is long gone. I hope to get it back. <laughs> Uh, number 52 is Werfel Bonanza from 2012. It's a two to five player game from Uwe Rosenberg, published by Amigo. Now, this is the Bonanza dice game. It was never brought into the States. It kind of got lost in a designer's rights struggle between Amigo and who they partnered with in the States, and it, it just didn't didn't quite make it and it's never had such a big following that it would need to come to the states uh this game i, I know that it's really high for the lightness of this game but i've had so many fabulous memories of this game um my friend stephanie straw is the oh gosh i can't even remember what she calls herself but she just she loves this game and she brings copies of it to every convention and she teaches it to anyone and everyone around and gosh i just have had so much fun playing this with people and you can whip it out at really any event and teach it to anyone um the players roll the dice and they're allocating their dice trying to make the best recipes they can but if other players are paying attention not on their turn they can also take advantage of how well the person who is active is rolling and I, I like that. And um, it says five players, but I know that we've shoved a few more in there because we're usually having a good time and having drinks and talking and everyone's having such a good time that you can just play this. I think we had eight in our in our game at the <laughs> at the uh, Plaid Hat party, um, but it's it's good, clean fun and it's pretty cheap on Amazon if you can find it. So um, note to everyone watching, uh, if you have color blindness issues or you have any kind of eyesight issues, this one's going to be really hard to differentiate the two different types of dice. There's kind of a white and then an off-white and you have to see the difference. So literally what I did, I jacked up my copy because I just took a sharpie around the off-white and I just circled all the off-white sides. Just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't stand having to just tell people, well, this one and that one are off-white and this one's white, <laughs> like over and over and over. So just fun. Something to be aware of. Uh, number 51, and the last on our list today is Bora Bora from 2013. There's actually have been a lot of dice games on this section of the list. Uh, this is a two to four player designed by Stefan Feld, number three. Stefan Feld. Uh, this is published by Aaliyah and Ravensburger. And this came out during that big year of Feld where Amerigo and Bora Bora and Rialto and all these games all in a big chunk. There were five Feld games that winter. And uh, this was one of the better ones in my opinion. Um, in it you are collecting tiles that are either um, you're trying to take favors of gods and you're moving around the islands building huts. And it's so beautiful. Um, the game is visually just stunning. It has all this beautiful island artwork on it, and the gameplay is very subtle. Um, these dice are rolled and they affect each round, and you really have to be careful to get the best tiles you can. Um, this one, I think my last game of it, unfortunately, was a while back, but we played three players and we ended all three of us within three points of each other. So we were all in a row, one point each difference. Um, so, so it's very, very fun. Um, I, I should get this one out more often. I think it's maybe lost its appeal because it did come out in that year of Feld. So so many people were like, really, Marguerite, another Feld game? 
but by now some of that's worn off and he's slowed down way down so I could probably sneak it back on the table <laughs> thanks for watching and we will be back next week with 10 more amazing games we're really getting into the good stuff now like top 50 these are gonna be amazing games I'm sure uh, if you've been enjoying this video please check out the other ones in the playlist they will be all linked together and I will have kind of my video of how I chose things, some anomalies, and some rules for the lists coming out very soon. Thank you.